The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with them. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat, so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even the wind and the sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Happy Father's Day, Eve. My grandparents' house was very, very old. It was in downtown Detroit. And it had accumulated the debris of life, the precious possessions of three full generations that had lived in the house. The attic and the basement were always just a big jumbled mess, kind of a chaotic array of old stuff. Tools and books and furniture and clothing and those piles of fading newspapers and shelves that had once fill, were once filled with home canned goods were just kind of sagging now uh, with not a whole lot on them. It was poorly lit. It was full of shadows and surprises. It was also filled with a lot of memories. But to me, a young seven-year-old self, It was a pretty spooky place. When my grandmother passed away, my father and I began the job of cleaning up the old house and getting it ready to sell. At first look, I couldn't imagine what it was going to take. Just to clean out the basement was going to take a lot of work. As I started down the steps to the basement, the fear in me began to get a little bit stronger. I was trying to be brave, but the place was just too spooky. I'm not sure if my dad read my thoughts that day or if he just knew I might be feeling a little bit overwhelmed by everything that was going on. He told me he wanted to gather some of his dad's tools and take them home, and together he went with me to the basement. He began turning on some lights and then some more lights. And I watched as he began to organize the chaos that was the basement, putting things in their places. And as he did, he would tell me about his own childhood, picking up this or that or staring at some old photographs, all of them hidden away down there. He chased away so many of the dark shadows and the fears that I had of that place. In the last year, I have felt like that so many times again. With the virus going around, the whole world seemed caught up in the grip of that pandemic, seeing loved ones struggling, hiding in their homes, working from home, homeschooling little ones at home, friends losing jobs as businesses were forced to close. And in the midst of it all, the chaos of this past year, I found myself somewhat fearful again, and at times just a little bit overwhelmed with it all. Adding my own voice to the cry of the apostles, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? I think we all know that feeling. It's called fear. Fear that we're going to be overwhelmed by everyday life and thinking God maybe just isn't there. How often have we wondered if God was present if he was paying attention to us, if he was listening to our pleas and our prayers. When someone we love is sick, 
Don't you care? When another week goes by without a job and the bills are piling up, do you care? Don't you care? When tragedy walks into our life for no good reason at all, God, don't you care? It's a question that haunts us all at one time or another. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? But it's a question we really don't need to ask at all. We already know the answer. Jesus is our strength and our courage. The message of this gospel is so clear, God does not abandon us. He calms the waves, silences the winds, and he crosses the waters with us all the time. Do not be afraid. How many times have we heard that line lately? In the first reading, that is exactly what God is telling Job. Let me be your strength. Let me be your courage. In all of this chaos and tragedy going on in your life, I'm near. I, God, am the master of all of creation. Look how I calmed the chaos of the world. Look how I locked up the waters of the earth, made them stay within the boundaries that I set for them. In a very special way, God is reassuring Job and telling him, don't be afraid. In the gospel, the apostles are terrified. Pure panic is in their voices. Teacher, don't you care that we are perishing? And we also hear how Jesus commanded the waters at that moment and the wind at that moment to just be silent. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. In 2015, Pope Francis issued an encyclical, Laudato Si. My Latin is really rusty. Many of you would believe that it's just about global warming and climate change. And I'd say if that's the only thing you got out of it, you didn't read it all the way through. Because in fact, those topics occupy a very small part of the document. It's about our responsibility to the world and for each other. But early on, the Holy Father reminds us of the theme so prominent in today's gospel. God is with us all the time. He says, the Creator does not abandon us. He never forsakes His loving plan or repents for having created us. We still have the ability to work together in building our common home. When we are overwhelmed by the scariness of this world, we may ask, is our sorrow in our sorrow or in our doubt? Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And the answer always, always comes back. The God who created us. The God who gave us his son in the ultimate sacrifice. The God who sent his spirit to be with us. He will not forsake us. No matter how violent the storm or how frightening the forecast, in moments of despair, we just need to remember that. We need to remember and turn to him just as the apostles did in that boat, in that storm-tossed sea. From today's psalm, we hear these words. They cried to the Lord in their distress. From their straits, he rescued them. He hushed the storm to a gentle breeze, and billows of the sea were stilled. Give thanks to the Lord. His love is everlasting.